Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Deontay Burton, host of Change Your Lives. I want to have a discussion with you guys today in regard to a subject matter that many parents, uh, it's not uncommon for many parents to be going through this particular subject right now. And a lot of us may experience it in our past when we were growing up, and that's dealing with back to school anxiety. Um, right now, we're in a day and age where everybody's a lot more conscious about mental health, especially with youth and adolescents, uh, being able to recognize certain things where when we were younger, and when I say younger, just say anybody, um, over the age of probably 35, um, things was probably kind of like looked at a, you know, you know, what a fun eye in regards to if you, you know if you having certain ways that you're feeling about yourself, you're stressed, you're nervous, uh, deject, uh, dejected or depressed or something like that. People just call you crazy or tell you stop whining and things like that. So I do think it's very, it's very smart to be more cognizant of you know mental health and things that our kids may be going through or ourselves uh, as well. But I want to talk with you guys that being the father of four four sons, and I've seen the whole gamut in regards to different ways they reacted when schools have been getting ready to start. So I want to have a discussion with you guys, um, and especially when it was an article that I read across, and just give you guys some actual tips in regards to recognizing back to school anxiety and give you some tips to help you know com combat and mitigate it. And we know by definition, anxiety is a feeling of stress, panic, or fear that can affect your everyday life physically and psychologically, okay? So, you know, just having some, you know, being nervous and jumpy about what's going on. Um, what was the, the definition, I think, what it was is uh, uh, depression is kind of like dealing with things from the past, anxiety is dealing with things from the future, kind of looking at it at, from that perspective where both of them fall on that spectrum, <laughs> uh, looking at it. And I do think, you know, when you're looking at it, you're, you have a child that's actually nervous or feeling funny or, um, uh, you know, got different kind of feelings about dealing with certain things. I think it's very smart to address it. You know, and you have certain conversations, but being smart as a parent, knowing what level, you know, your expertise is to be able to dole out suggestions and things like that. But again, that's the whole point of having this video, so we can, you know, as parents, be able to help each other. Even if you're not a parent, if you know, know a parent, family member, or something like that, or a friend, being able to, you know take this information, be able to share it, and help it make it be applicable and beneficial to the, those particular children. And what I was looking at, uh, why the parents and children battle back to school anxiety? Uh, you know, feeling of worry or fear that most people can, you know, momentarily mild or manageable. But for others, it can be a constant overwhelming and debilitating. I think a lot of times, it, and it doesn't necessarily, I don't think, deal with the mental makeup of your kids. Sometimes, just with school, things changing, you know, especially if, you know, kids are, when you're going through, when you, as you grow, you, you have certain things like this, friendships, cliques, clothing, uh, hell, just the curriculum and dealing with school, just school work and tests and stuff like that. Your mind can be all over everywhere, so you're juggling relationships, school work and all this other kind of things, whereas the, the mental maturity of a person that's older, you can handle it, and a child may be a little... Not be a little. It, it can be overwhelming sometimes with doing it. The, I know when I was growing up, if you start the whole notion of I'm nervous, I'm feeling funny, something like that, you just told quit down whining, you know. And I don't think that was the most uh, <laughs> best advice. That's what I got. The issue comes up with that is you still never taught how to deal with it. Now sometimes you get older, depending on what path you go on, you can be put in a situation where your mental makeup gets stronger and you can mentally handle a lot more different things. But that, that isn't necessarily always the case, right? So that's why, again, I want to have this conversation with looking at that. Um, you know, is your child uh, having back-to-school anxieties? And here a few things for a couple of signs. I wanted to look through these notes I had made. Uh, there being a, a wide number of, of signs of anxiety. Um, they can A child can be, look, you know, complaining in a couple of ways where they're talking about they got a tummy, uh, a bad tummy, or illness that really is there. Uh, behavioral changes or tantrums, saying something, um, saying no to something, loss of appetite, or it can be crying uh, with, with that. Uh, a lot of time being fidgety, biting nails, becoming quiet, struggling to sleep or eat. Um, you never know. Sometimes they can actually withdraw from themselves and want to be away from certain things. You have to kind of look at, especially when we say, when I say those particular behaviors, if it's totally against the way they normally are, right? And you want to just be mindful of that. And don't be so quick to, uh, 
uh, misdiagnose something. Because sometimes you do have, you know, me having four sons, I know I've been in a situation where they said it may have been anxiety, just probably legit might have been lazy. They didn't want to do something. I didn't, they didn't want to go to school. They didn't want to uh, do this test. And it may be more so because they didn't feel like studying. Uh, they didn't, you know, just didn't have an interest in doing it. But I will say, you know, try to do the best job possible of not trying to diagnose something that's probably over your head. You 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 do as a parent, you know, you know your child probably than anybody, you know, hopefully. But you know what level you are on that. I never been the type of parent where I'm trying to fix something I know I really can't fix. <clears throat> that being I had a son with a speech problem. I mean I'm not a speech therapist, so I definitely had um uh, him set up and he's he's doing outstanding right now. He's in college, but uh, at the early age, I was able to see, like, listen, this son above my level. But then when you see your kids going through certain things in regards to, you know, behavior, the way they respond to certain things, change it. Especially, I didn't even knew when I went through my divorce, being able to just recognize, like, you might, you know, just in case some things here and there, you know, I just kind of took that initiative to say, hey, let me make sure my kids talk to somebody. But when you start seeing these certain behavior changes because school is coming up, now school is going on. And depending on how the school year is going, you got to kind of, you know, once it starts, and the reason why we're having a discussion because we're like a month into the school year being in effect, being able to just watch, you know, kind of like from the sidelines looking how they respond and how are they doing in school, having those open conversations with your children. You know, how's school going? You know, what are your teachers, you know, doing this? You, you're making friends, you're not making friends. Uh, and, and I'm not saying not making friends is a bad thing or anything like that, but just kind of get a pulse of how they're responding and functioning with school uh classes okay how you feeling about everything do you like it don't like it just get kind of gauging responses i don't necessarily know what's a good or bad answer i do think the biggest thing just kind of looking at you know their sways and their behavior like i was saying with the um uh, the getting sick uh avoidance and stuff withdrawals and things like that, things that are against their behavior but i don't necessarily you know look at this is the way kids should be you should be you know, a kid, they kind of like to keep it to themselves or she be the life of the party. Everybody ain't the same. And, you know, again, being a parent with four different personalities, I had to see that, you know, with doing it. So I wouldn't necessarily go so much in what we think is normal, but more so you know they're normal, how they normally do it, uh, uh, function, if they sway away from that. So with that said, a couple tips uh, in regards to that, you know, with doing it. Uh, there are different things you can do with, with your kid. You can walk with them to school, start talking with them about school, discuss some of the things they may be nervous about, um, maybe add certain kind of structural things to uh, to their daily routine to kind of help certain things, uh, help your child to kind of get used to it. I think communication is a big piece. Uh, the only thing when you communicate with your child, you got to get in the mindset to make sure you're going to be extremely patient because sometimes the parent we want to get to the root of the problem so we can fix it especially depending on how our lives are going and we figure like hey just tell me what's wrong just speak to me just speak to me and all the while your kid may not necessarily want to open that up at that particular time if that makes sense and you just got to be patient with your child to just say like hey this is this is, i want to talk to you how to feel about it hey if you want to come back circle back and maybe kind of sideways, you know, maybe later on that night, a couple of days, a week, whatever. But just kind of building that bridge. Because everyone does have different levels. You may have a relationship with your child where y'all like best friends. You can always talk to them and, and um, be able to just be open with certain things. And then sometimes you might just got to pry certain things loose from them. And sometimes you have a situation where you may have a family member or friend that they may have certain conversations with them quicker than they have with you. I don't that's something to feel bad at bad at or with as a parent i will say that i've always and i never had a problem with my children talking to anyone else as long as they were that credible reputable person that i felt comfortable with that if you knew if it was an issue uh with your child and they had a conversation you felt comfortable they were going to come and let you know what's going on we can't always have a situation where we think are ideal with our children but the end game is the end game we want to make sure we raise our kids to be happy, good, productive citizens and things like that. And if they have issues or something, something, we can just address them as early as possible to help get corrective measures um, to make them the best them possible. And so that's why I want to, you know, have that discussion with you guys in regards to if your kids 
battling the back to school anxiety just be able, number one recognize looking at behavioral changes or different things where you know uh, physically things you know they seem they sick or they're not doing well and just that that's against their normal um, having conversations, putting certain plans in action. And if you, need, you think you need to go talk to somebody, go talk to somebody. Start with a school counselor. You may want to talk to a teacher if you want to go, you know, uh, speak with a professional or something like that just to talk or whatever. Um, you can do that as well. Um, but I definitely make sure I wouldn't address it from the standpoint of, you know, shut up, stop whining, things like that. Now, you know, you're, again, you know your kid. You know they just don't want to deal with something. But if you aren't for sure... I would always stick on the side of cautious, right? Because, you know, we all know your child is your most prized possession, and we want to do the best for them as possible. And I know I wholeheartedly believe that for any parent that loves their child and wants the best for them. So I just want to have that quick discussion with you guys in regards to if, you got, if your child is battling any kind of back-to-school anxieties, number one, uh, uh, be, be aware of what anxiety is, address it, if, if, if it's there, and try to put some kind of corrective measures in place. Again, I'm Deontay Burden, host of Change the Lives. Make sure you go to Change the Lives YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel by easily hitting that bop, that blue man in the bottom right-hand corner, and also hit to get a notification each time we upload a new video. Take care of yourself, guys, and I'll talk with you soon.